Okay, let's try and get back to the right screen. There we go. Had to move rooms to try and get some quiet space. So here I am. Uh, welcome back, Way Academy. Um, by popular demand, I've created a vocabulary sketch note assignment for vocabulary from the hate you give. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to walk through this one with you. It's not as long as um, the novel project, the novel study project that we walked through earlier. That is, like I said, that is, that's the jackpot of all ELA assignments. But here's a little shorter one. If you were trying to get a couple strands, um, take a look. Similar to what we did earlier in the year, you will be sketch noting a number of key terms from the novel that we've been reading together. Remember that when you sketch note, you have more tools available to help you make connections with the ideas or words you're trying to remember. So we try and trigger those areas of the brain to help you remember the meaning, sample sentences, and a graphic or symbol to help you um, remember the meanings of these keywords. And another just side note before I read the next sentence to you, know that vocabulary is a portion of the SAT and PSAT and even some of the ACT testing. So whether or not it's a vocabulary term from the hate you give um, or something from our other vocabulary list earlier in the year, do know that these words uh, will expand your vocabulary or your lexicon, if you will. That's a fancy word for vocabulary. So um, it's not just getting credit, it's also helping you prepare for the test and just to be a better person all around. Sketchnoting actually makes the information or vocabulary terms more memorable for you as you engage your critical thinking abilities to decide how to represent it. Again, you're thinking a little bit harder to figure out, all right, I know what it means to be in a brawl. Brawl is a fancy word for a big fight. So I'd write down my own definition. I'd look up the dictionary definition, write that out. And then I'd show some sort of boxing gloves or something like that to show that it's fight, something to trigger that in my brain. So remember, it's the definition in your own words. It's the definition. Where's my camera? It's the definition in dictionary terms and a graphic to help you bring it all together. So for this project, you'll read the passage from the story, pay attention to the underlined word, use the context clues, that means read the rest of the words to help you infer, read between the lines. Infer is that fancy term for reading between the lines to come up with your own definition. So infer what you think the word means, record the definition, look up the word, provide a dictionary definition, and then include a graphic. It can be a picture that you draw, it can be a symbol or a graphic taken online, whatever works. And I'm not even picky on sourcing these. You can include sources, as we should, but this is not a grade for citing um, pictures properly. So uh, don't worry too much about that. You can just draw your own. All right. So for example, um, oh, and sorry, for the next step, if you're trying to get to that level three and you wanna take it above and beyond, remember, have fun with your sketch notes. Use different colors. Maybe you've got arrows or some sort of connectors between words. Maybe you want the word, then the definition. Um, you may have speech bubbles or thought bubbles to try and get your definition across. Sprinkle in symbols, doodles, sketches, use frames, make shapes around your words, numbers, emojis, whatever it is. It's your dictionary study tool to help you uh, familiarize yourself and expand your vocabulary. So that's our overview. When we go into the actual first module and only module, it will remind you how to sketch note. When you sketch note, you have more tools available to help you make connections with ideas or words that you're trying to remember. It actually makes the information more memorable for you, again, engaging those critically thinking skills. So we have our little sample of a sketch note telling us why we should sketch note. All right. So they've got their little graphics, their little connectors, little things to help them define the steps of sketch noting. In this case, um, because you're defining actual words, you'd need to write the sentence from the dictionary as well. So step one, it breaks it down because this is the only step. I've chunked them into chapters, uh, chapter groups for you, but each chunk of chapters has five words. So there's 40 words altogether, just like we did earlier in the year as well. So you'll read the passage from the story, pay attention to the underlying vocabulary word. Again, you're using those context clues. You're reading what's happening in the rest of that little bit to determine what you think the word means. So you're reading between the lines to infer what you think the word means in your own definition. And it's okay if your own definition's wrong. 
Just write something. What do you think that word means? And then you'll look up the dictionary definition, put that in there, and include a graphic picture or symbol. So when we're looking at our first group of chapters, we see chapters one to three. So if you need to go back and look it up for yourself, you can go to the link of the text or you can look in the book. Or like I said, you can just um, guess your own meaning and then look up the meaning online. But the first underlying word, scopes. So let's read the rest of the sentence to see what we think scopes might mean. Well, I ain't babysitting you all night, so you better do something, Kenya says, and scopes the room. So we know that they're at the party, and we know that Kenya's a little bit, you know, frustrated, perhaps in her tone. So she scopes the room. I know sometimes when I get frustrated, I want to get out of there, right? I want to avoid the situation. So maybe she's looking around and that's exactly what scopes means so you'd write your own definition i think scopes means to look around then you'd write the dictionary definition according to miriam webster it says scopes means boom and then find a picture maybe you've got someone doing a search or you've got some sort of glasses to represent looking whatever works for you to help you remember that term all right then we see barks rummage partition and defines so you'd Define each of those five words in your own words. Then you'd look them up in the dictionary, write the actual dictionary definition. And of course, include that picture. That picture is important because that triggers your memory what the definition means. So the picture is something that you choose that reminds you. It may not make sense to me, like barks, for example. Hands on the dashboard, the officer barks at me. Don't move. Well, when I think of bark, I think a dog barking. So I might have a picture of a dog. But in this case, it's a comparison of the um, officer, you know, talking as though he were a dog. He's talking mean and abruptly. So you may have a picture of someone shouting. Whatever works for you to help you remember that word. All right. So you do that for each chunk of chapters. As I said, I've broken them down for you. You'll see there's 40 words altogether. So each of the underlying words. Pretty straightforward on that one. Then when you have all of your definitions and your pictures ready to go, you can um, record as you're going along in a pages document, or maybe you want to open a keynote. I know a lot of people did keynote for our vocabulary earlier in the year. So if keynote works for you, that's great. By the time you get to the final product, all those 40 new words that you learned, you are going to choose 25 of them to use in one page of creative writing. So it says using the sketch note study guide you've created throughout this lab project, select a minimum of 25 words to use in a one page creative writing sample. The style or type of writing is up to you. However, you must use classroom appropriate language and incorporate at least 25 words used correctly in your piece. Maybe you wanna write a short story about what happened next, or maybe you think Star and Chris went on a date and you want to write the dialogue between them on a date. Maybe you want to write a poem. Maybe you're going to write a news report. I see a typo there. Let's edit that right now. See, you guys can see how this works in real time. Even teachers make mistakes. So we see news report, edit it, and we save. That's why we revise and edit. So you see the writing process in full bloom. Maybe you want to do police report. What did uh, Officer 115 record that night? Diary entry, a song. I know a lot of you like to rap. I'd love to hear some hate you give raps. I'd love to post them online too. So, you know, let's get going, guys. Let's get interacting together. Obituary, as you know, is a type of writing that sort of tells someone's life story after they've died. So it highlights their main events and accomplishments. Or, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just says, hey, he lived a simple life and had two kids and um, respects can be paid here. But um, usually we go into a little more detail. And especially because the story tells us a lot, if you're going to focus on someone passing away, even if it's not actually happening in the book but maybe you think maybe you think maverick was run over by a truck right after the story ended tell me about maverick's life in his obituary you can write a speech star actually used her voice for her public service um trying to make a change so maybe you want to write a speech to echo some of the things she said or something of your own creation if you have a creative style of writing that you'd like to run by me just reach out let me know we'll make it work 
All right. Have a great day, guys. Get some work done. Here's another option for you to have some fun and thinking about the hate you give. Credit. It counts. Don't worry about the strands. That's the last thing I want to leave you with. If you see ninth grade strands in your 11th grade, I will be able to adjust that for you. Okay. If you see that it's um, informative writing and you already have one of those strands, I'll be able to bump it to explanatory writing because there's elements. English is that weird subject that a lot of the standards and strands mix together. So don't worry about those. Pick a project you'd like, submit your best work, and I'll make it work for you. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me. Boom, boom, boom. Let's try and find stop. <laughs>